You know, I think it's so interesting how travel challenges truths you were raised thinking were self-evident and God-given. I just love the confusion it causes to me when I go somewhere else and I meet people who wouldn't trade passports. It really was off-putting at first. I got more wealth, more freedom, more opportunity than you'll ever have. And you wouldn't trade passports with me? Don't you have the American dream? You don't? <laughs> you got the Bulgarian dream? <laughs> you got the Latvian dream, the Moroccan dream, the Sri Lankan dream? Yeah, people have the Sri Lankan dream. It's a beautiful thing. I celebrate that because I've seen them and I know how exciting their dream is. I was raised thinking the world is a pyramid with us on top and everybody else trying to get there. And until well into my adulthood, I believed if they couldn't figure that out, we really, because we care, had every right to go in and elect a government for them that did get it correct. <laughs> and now I've learned that one of the most ugly things you could possibly do as a nation is write another nation's textbooks. And I think you'd be appalled if you knew how many textbooks we're writing in nations that don't have the American dream. It's ugly, frankly. When you travel, you realize that different proud people have different struggles and it's inspiring. I was in Turkey once, driving around in the eastern part of Turkey. In eastern Turkey, as a tour guide, you don't have a list of sites, it's a cultural scavenger hunt. You see 300 kids in a stadium, singing and thrusting their fist up in the air, you stop and you go inside and you see what's going on. They're thrusting their fist up in the air, screaming and all in unison, we are a secular nation. We are a secular nation. Oh, I asked my tour guide, what's going on? Don't they like God? No, we love God here in Turkey, but we're very concerned about the fragile and precious separation of mosque and state in our country. I didn't know they have a separation of mosque and state. I didn't know their constitution requires that the military overthrow the government if it ever becomes a theocracy. This is heady stuff that Americans generally don't appreciate. And you go over there and you realize they're waging some pretty cool struggles, some pretty valiant struggles. You've got to remind yourself, every year on this planet, five languages go extinct. And that means five heroic little nations lose their struggle and die. I was raised so proud of Nathan Hale and Patrick Henry and Ethan Allen. Remember guys that could only wish they had more than one life to give for their country? And I've traveled and I realized Patrick Henry's and Nathan Hale's are a dime a dozen on this planet. It's not a bad thing, it's a great thing. Every ethnicity has its own Nathan Hale's. And every year five of those groups die. No headlines, they just get weaker and weaker and weaker until that last person who speaks that language dies and one little bit of less ethnic diversity on this beautiful planet. It's a sad thing. And what's impressive to me is we think that other nations don't have the spine that we've got. That's what's scary to me. They got as much spine as we do. Why would they have less spine than us? And as a matter of fact, you could make a very clear case that they would, should have more spine than us because we're so soft and we're into our red coat stage rather than the revolutionaries say, they've got the spine. It's going to be a tough fight. They're not just going to roll over like shock and awe and the war's over. There's going to be people with spine that believe differently than we do. Uh, uh, Archbishop Oscar Romero. There's a Nathan Hale and an Ethan Allen for his people in El Salvador. I went down there on the 25th anniversary of his assassination. There's a life-changing travel experience. Life-changing. I could have hung out in Mazatlan I decided to go down there, eat rice and beans, get covered with bug bites, and march with those people and remember their Nathan Hale. If you don't know about Oscar Romero, learn about him. He's an inspiration. And in El Salvador, we went to the monument that looks a lot like our Vietnam monument and all the people killed fighting the United States in that little country of three or four or five million people. I'm not saying they're right and we're wrong. I'm just saying there's real struggles going on and there's people that disagree with us and they're not wrong just because they disagree with us. There's diversity and there's pride on this planet that you can't imagine unless you have the opportunity to travel. I was in Afghanistan once and I tell you it was a powerful experience. It's so strange to find nobility in people that are supposed to be your enemies. I was sitting in a cafeteria, just minding my own business like backpackers do when they're in Kabul. And a local man sat next to me and he said, can I join you? And I said, you already have. <laughs> and he said, you're an American, aren't you? And I said, yeah. And he said, well, I'm a professor here in Afghanistan and I want you to know that a third of the people on this planet eat with their spoons and forks like you do, a third of the people eat with chopsticks, and a third of the people eat with fingers like I do, and we're all just as civilized. 
ooh, he had a chip on his shoulder about this, and he wanted to make a point with me. I thought, okay, okay. And I, you know, I left uh, Afghanistan, I was traveling through South Asia, and I, I thought about it a lot. And I went to fancy restaurants filled with professional local well-dressed people with no silverware. Ceremonial sink in the middle of the room. People wash their hands and celebrate using the opportunity to use their fingers for what God made them for, to eat, to give them nourishment. And I got quite comfortable with that. It became really natural. And I had to be retrained when I got home. <laughs> but the point is, there are proud people that eat with their fingers. This is just so fun to respect that and celebrate it. And to realize in our travels, people have different passions for different things. When you travel around, we don't have a lock on freedom. Life's not precious to us and cheap for them. It hurts me to hear that. When I'm traveling, I see beautiful things in Europe and wherever I would travel, you'd see the same sort of magic, that beautiful fabric of a local community.